Well, so good day, everybody. Uh, let's see, what is it? It is Friday, September 23rd. My name is Craig Blanchett, uh, and I'm a global director with Take Shape for Life, part of Team Global. It's a privilege to be part of that team. Uh, I also uh, am the host of the call today. We do this every Friday at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. And if you're w watching this on a podcast, you can tune in live 9, 9 a.m. Um, or 11 central and uh, join us live. It's always good. Um, if you have something, if you want to be here but you can't, just think about um, if you've tweaked a couple things, what if you could, what would that look like? And so that's a little bit of structural tension and saying instead of going living your life based upon I can't, you ask yourself how can I? And then all of a sudden some things start to um, uh, materialize. And for those of you that are watching this live, uh, in the email that I sent you, there is a, um, oh, let's see here. It looks like it didn't come through. Well, I'll make sure it gets on the next one. They have, um, uh, I'll have the links so you can actually uh, subscribe to the podcast and so you can uh, subscribe to the Vimeo channel or the YouTube channel. It's all the same content. It just depends on how you want to uh, consume it. But uh, there's a, um, if you search iTunes for Team Blanchett, you can listen to audio only version and they'll be automatically delivered to your, uh, your mobile device every week. As well as if you want the video version, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel or the Vimeo channel and it will alert you anytime there's a new uh, episode. And so uh, that is going to be that for our call. Today we have, uh, we're going to have a little discussion about Take Shape for Life University. And, and uh, the reason why we do Take Shape for Life University is um, primarily because all of us health coaches are also working on our own health personally. And so uh, Take Shape for Life has an amazing community uh, and support structure that's um, created every week. And so we have, uh, many of us listen to those. Sometimes we actually have um, uh, organized someone to actually do a highlight uh, of, of one of the calls. Uh, but it house, helps people to get connected into the support structure, and it helps us to learn things and, and have a discussion form. Because one of the downsides to the support calls becoming so popular is that they have um, – one of the things of the, the support calls getting so popular is that they're no longer very interactive. Uh, they're a webinar form. And so you pretty much have a couple people speaking and then you can interact through text only. Whereas in the past you had people that would call in and you could hear their questions and it was kind of a group, you know, kind of a group discussion. Uh, but once we hit the capacity, we had to switch to webinar. So what's nice is we still have plenty of capacity here on our Friday call, and so we're able to kind of take take the discussion and and uh, communitize it, if you will. That's a new fa fancy word. I just made that up. Thanks, Carrie. And so, um, so Take Shape for Life University, that's what that's about. And then we're going to go into a little bit of coach training. We're going to be talking about what is a CEO hat and, and, and what does it look like to be a CEO of your life as well as your um, health coach practice. And then we're going to go into uh, some Facebook strategies. So we're going to get a little down in the weeds with Facebook and talk about the whys and the hows and the whats of Facebook. Um, but before we move on, um, I want to see, it looks like, um, any guests today. I know that we have Jeff Cook here that's joined us. And so I wanted to, uh, introduce yourself, Jeff, uh, where are you from? And he asked me, he's, he's not part of our team directly, but he wanted to, to tune in and, um, get a little feel for what we're doing. And so where are you from and who's your coach? And tell us a little bit about you, Jeff. Well, first of all, can you guys hear me? Yes, loud and clear. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I'm uh, very appreciative of that. This is super awesome. I've kind of uh, uh, chased you around and joined these periodically on the uh, recordings. And uh, so I thought I'd just throw out a thing, uh, question, see if you mind I join. So mm -hmm. thanks for having me. But um, so I uh, live down south of you in Salem. And uh, I've been a senior coach a little up and a little down for probably three years and just 
enjoy uh, helping people with it. Uh, my parents and family have had some drastic results in our program and it kind of inspired me there. I don't have a huge weight loss story. I love to work out and exercise and I've been a kind of a uh, health minded person most of my life. But, um, but I, you know, the rest of the things I'm learning are just about myself and, and really the bigger picture beyond uh, diet and food and what you put in your mouth uh, is just uh, been really awesome. So, mm -hmm. Um, thanks for having me. And here I am uh, yeah. trying to feed myself again. And, uh, and you guys are welcome in. Thanks. So you found out about the fact that we meet based upon listening to the recording when I told you how to get here and when we meet live? Uh, well, I've been hijacking various things okay. from you people for a while. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, I've snuck in on a lot of the Miller trainings. I've met with that met Alex and a lot of you guys at different things. Yeah. And yeah. Exactly. Everybody's just so wonderfully welcoming. So, yeah. uh, what's that? Who's your coach? Uh, Jane cook, who is my mom. And then, oh, okay. up, uh, Susan Mulligan, who is under Dan Bell is okay. basically the higher structure of it. So yeah. it's a short line, wow. which, which is kind of good and bad in ways, but, um, they're always yeah. welcoming. It doesn't really matter. Because yeah. everybody's so awesome and welcoming in our yeah. our community. So well, speaking of short lines, I've been short my whole life, and I think it's just, <laughs> so. There we go. I'll be here all morning. <laughs> nice. Thank yeah. you. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Yep. So, um, has anybody listened to one of the support calls or a podcast this week? And any any takeaways or noteworthy items that we could toss around and discuss? You know, Alex, you did. Does any, has anybody else listened to? Why don't you just toss out the topic and a couple of takeaways, and we'll just kind of kick that ball around a little bit, and then we'll dive in. Yeah, well, the topic I listened to was um, inflammation um, on the Habits of Health call with Amber and Jared, and um, it's a huge topic, and I think it's amazing to consider that we cover stuff like this that absolutely downright saves lives. Um, the inflammation is the silent killer and I highly recommend anyone that is interested in helping another person watch this webinar because it's such a big deal uh, when you think of someone who's overweight and you think that's the issue it is but it, the issue is is that being overweight leads to massive amounts of inflammation in your body um, and you can be actually at a fairly lean weight too and have lots of inflammation in your body and that's probably the biggest misconception. And most of the medical issues that we treat today, and these are, th I want you to watch the call. That's the main thing. You're going to learn this basic stuff. Uh, but most of the stuff that is treated today is inflammatory based stuff. You know, most of the diseases we're dealing with, like heart disease and diabetes and uh, uh, a lot of things that cause strokes, um, a lot of things that where we're talking about cholesterol issues. It's all inflammatory based. And, and so what is it? Well, most of us only pay attention to inflammation when there's, you know, some really super acute phase where, you know, you see a swollen ankle, you know, you twist the ankle or you, um, you know, have a, a massive headache or something and then you're paying attention. But what, what you don't pay attention to and it's not easy to is when it's chronic and it's just in our body all the time and that causes stuff over time to start breaking down. And then we think the arthritis just shows up all of a sudden. <laughs> we think that the health issue just all of a sudden overnight happened. It really was a time over time and then the straw that broke the camel's back. So hopefully you're turned on to know that this is the killer that kills most people with medical issues is inflammation. And so we want to get great at keeping inflammation down. Chapter 19 in the Habits of Health book is the place to go for that. The Habits of Health call that happens on Wednesday night is recorded. There's a podcast, and you could check this out. A couple key takeaways outside of that, like just that knowledge of how important it is that inflammation can, can take away your life and your vitality and your mobility. Um, but some of the key things that we can do, this is amazing. Um, first off, our food intake plays one of the biggest factors in cutting down inflammation. And I love to hear some thoughts on this as well. I'll just open up the topic and let some other people bounce it around. Um, but what are some of the things that you guys have learned? And I'll, if, you, if I don't hear quick answers, um, there's no wrong or specific right answer. It's just wanna know some things that you've 
heard or learn uh, that helped lower inflammation. So please jump in. Hi, Alex. Hey. How are you all this morning? Doing great. Good. This is a favorite topic of mine just because uh, my husband being a physician is very into, always has been, looking at the uh, blood levels that evaluate inflammation. And it's interesting to what Alex said is that somebody can be lean and still have high levels of inflammation. But what we've noticed in our practice that's really cool is, um, you know, we know that inflammation can cause pain. And for some people, it's chronic levels of pain, and they're taking some pretty um, awful drugs, I guess, to try and combat that. But when we've been uh, able to get them on board with program, um, their inflammation levels actually go down. You can actually document that via blood work. And they start feeling great, and then many, many times, we can start reducing some of those really high-level pain meds that they have, that they've been taking. And it's like freeing them from prison. They can move around, they have energy, and, um, and are able to live their lives more fully again. So uh, we've seen that a lot. I mean, we've seen walkers go away because people are able to support their own weight, of course, because their weight's down, but also uh, the pain goes down as well. Mm. Absolutely. You know, you brought up a really huge topic, and that is just that the side effect of having inflammation is people want to treat it, right? And they want to cover up. It's like putting um, a Band-Aid or a, I guess a piece of duct tape over the warning light on your car as it's starting to blink at you and tell you that you're out of oil or your tire pressure's low. Well, let's not actually deal with the tire pressure or the oil. Let's just cover it up by taking some pretty crazy drugs that cause liver damage, that cause other types of deterioration that actually are blocking us from a signal that we should be paying attention to. Now, I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong to take some of those temporarily or to, if you have something that just can't be treated by your lifestyle, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I know some pretty healthy people who have done everything they can do to fill their tire pressure and treat their oil. Uh, some of them are great health coaches that are just really have some genetics that did not treat them well, and they've got to do something extra. But for most people, Daniela, you're really hitting it on the head. We can actually treat that. 95%, this is one of the cool things that comes out of this, 95% um, of all um, health issues that are treated today in the U.S. can be, um, um, a lot of those issues can be taken care of by getting to a healthy weight and a healthy level of inflammation. Um, and I don't want to throw out too many stats. I'll throw out one more. So 80% of all diseases that are treated right now in the U.S. Um, right now are lifestyle based. And so you're, we're talking about it. We can take the health by the horns, if you will, by what we put in our body and fuel ourselves with. So foods are huge. So does anybody know, um, and I'll, I'll wrap this up quick. Um, anybody know a couple of the foods that are really like inflammatory, responsive foods? They cause a lot of fiery inflammation in your body before you go there diane had her hand up oh sorry diane no it's okay you couldn't see so go ahead diane yeah yeah good morning um well i you know it never ceases to amaze me how who are you diane and why are you credible to be talking about this topic oh <laughs> well i don't know um i'm a registered dietitian and i've worked in this field for a long long time and one of the books that i just pulled out of my library i don't know can you see this or not i can't yeah. tell it's called the inflammation syndrome. And I actually got continuing medical education hours to take a course on inflammation. So all of the, and, and a lot of the information that Dr. A covers in his book is in this book. So it's really scientifically credible. And that always keeps me, you know, excited about um, what we teach our clients because you don't have to spend a fortune um, on an education to get the most recent um, scientific information. So that's really exciting. So in response to your question, Alex, as far as one of the most inflammatory, well, sugars, for sure, high carbs, and then uh, omega-6 fats also. So anyway. You, Diane, you talked about some cooking oils that we use that change when you heat them. Yep. And oh, yeah. Inflammatory when they're mm -hmm. heated. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have one or two of those that are off the top of your head? Yeah. <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, well, I mean, and that's the thing about being really black and white about certain foods. They're not 
you know, like olive oil can become very inflammatory if you cook it at a high temperature. It turns into a big trans fat. So knowledge about how to, you know, cook at lower temperature or use olive oil more in non cooking applications like sal uh, salad dressing. When I make my salad dressing, that's what I use, olive oil. So, um, and uh, coconut oil is actually very stable. Um, so that's a good one if you're gonna use high temperatures um, in your cooking, so. You just said something is super important. And if, if we were all listening to that, we just got a big like, wow. Um, don't raise your hand, but blink if you've ever um, cooked with olive oil and basically heated it up over 300 degrees in a pan. And, I don't, we, thought, and we thought we were being healthy because we were using we're olive oil. <laughs> That's right, it converts into a trans fat. And so it is a low a temperature. big giant one, I think That's is right. what you said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very giant. And so it's pretty amazing, you think you're doing something healthy. I love that you brought that topic out because we think, oh, we don't want hydronated margarines, we don't want trans fat, where it says trans fat on it. Well, how about a fat that was turned into a trans fat that used to be healthy for you. And so there are a couple, uh, you started to allude, Diane, to some of the healthier fats that we can cook with it at high temperature. So maybe name two or three, um, and, and watch the video, watch, watch the habits of health for all the other stuff and read chapter 19, okay? Mm -hmm. That's where you guys wanna go to. Hopefully you're turned on to this topic, but Diane, since we got you, maybe take 10, 15 more seconds to tell us about a couple high temperature oils we can cook with when we are stir frying and sauteing so we can avoid that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just mentioned the coconut oil one, mm -hmm. uh, though I have a little reservation. going to be a little careful about how much of it you use, but uh, grapeseed oil is another good one and canola oil. Those are go. pretty stable. All right. Excellent. So this was a great topic, and as you can see, so we want to be mindful of the environment that we're in, and there's some things that we can do. Uh, when Environment isn't just um, like, oh, the chemicals around me. It's the environment of a lack of sleep. It's the environment of having um, um, a lot of extra fat on your body. That's an environment you create in your body. Um, it's an environment of overusing antibiotics. If you're having constant use of antibiotics, and you're not repopulating your gut with probiotics. These are small things we don't think about. Did you know after you take an antibiotic, you need to start taking probiotics immediately afterwards to get back the stuff you killed off that was helping you keep inflammation at bay? Yeah, so an unhealthy gut. Um, things like poor gum hygiene and teeth hygiene, that's a big one, people don't think about it. Having a bad mouth hygiene is directly linked to high inflammation levels in the body. Um, Carrie's I, a hygienist, by the way, and so. Do it? Carrie. Oh, she, Carrie, is, am, I, am I telling the truth, Carrie, on that one? <laughs> It is, it's amazing how the correlation is. People with uh, gum disease have a higher correlation of heart disease and stuff. So, and a lot of other issues. So anyhow, fun topic, um, fun because we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, and, and these things are lifestyle. You know, it's, it's if you don't wanna change your lifestyle, you have, um, so you wanna make it easy. Well, then you can take a pill, but there's always, or a prescription. So there's, but there's always the downside. So if you're willing to do the work to change the lifestyle, you don't have the downside of the prescription. It works with your body rather than kind of attacking your body. And so, um, but lifestyle is harder to deal with because you have all of those um, temptations and desires and social situations and preferences and all those kinds of things that are around lifestyle, you know, where a pill a pill can that you don't have to deal with all the social stuff, but then you have the the, the uh, side effects of the prescription. Uh, so, anyway, that's what we do. We we um, we we rock. We're we're we got superpowers here. Greg, I want to oh. go ahead. Go ahead, Daniela. And then when you're done, I want to just show everybody how you can watch these and how you can send these links to your clients quickly. Mm -hmm. It'll take ten seconds, but go ahead. I just think that goes back to a lot of what we do is just help people really find out why it matters to them, right? I mean, for maybe a few people, it won't matter to them that their life is shortened because they're taking um, medications to cover up symptoms. But in, in the long term, um, their quality will likely go down. They'll you know, have less movement. Um, so when we can do our job and help them see the reason for, um, the positive reason for pushing forward, um, to your, uh, what, what is your little quote, 
Craig, pain pushes until the pulls. pulls, right? Um, and that's our job is to help people get to that place where the desire pulls them forward. I love it. Yeah, so the C-reactive protein is the test. If you go in and do a normal blood panel, they won't they won't actually use you test for that marker. So you have to ask for them specifically to test for that. But that is a um, uh, an, uh, a clear way to see where your inflammation levels are and then as they change over time. And it does take a couple of years for them to get really, really low. And so when you say, so like, like um, Lisa Castro, her C-reactive protein levels are very, very low, but, but she doesn't deviate. She doesn't eat high inflammation foods because then that that takes her away from where she wants to be going. And so she's really clear on what she eats because she has a really clear um, place she wants to live in her, in her body. And so sometimes we, um, sometimes we have the thought where people say, you know, everything in moderation. And I just, I go, uh, um, I don't subscribe to that mentality. Uh, arsenic in moderation is still, poison. Right. <laughs> and so, um, so I, th I think that this, that idea of, of everything all moderation, when we actually live that out in our lives, I don't think it ends up being what we intend it to be when we yeah, say, yeah. let's not play Russian roulette in moderation. Right? Yeah, let's not, let's not. Yep. Yeah. So go ahead and show us, uh, uh, um, Linda said, I'd love to not just listen to the podcast, but I'd love to watch the webinars and the video and be able to send that to people. So Alex is going to show us where uh, you can go to your co-branded website and everybody can have access. All right. So when you go to your co-branded website, um, sorry, it's taking a little time because of the Zoom. And you, ha you can't go to tsfl.com to get there. You have to go to a co-branded website. That's right, because uh, the access to these tools is specifically for clients. And it's, it's one of the values that we offer. Um, and I just want to take five seconds and say, as a coach, um, we, if we were charging for these services, it'd be worth like $300 a month to a client, like to have all this access. So we have this wealth that we offer people for free. Oh my goodness. So you go to tools and support on the toolbar. And from there on the left-hand side, you've got all these really cool things and look at what's right at the top on the left side, weekly support calls. Um, they probably could change the name to weekly support webinars slash calls because every Many of these are on a webinar now to where uh, they go in. So you got all the nurses support calls. Here's the live call in information, but here are the archives right over here. And then you've got the habits of health, which we were just talking about down here. You just scroll down. There's doctors. Oh, I just skipped over the habits of health. Sorry. Um, the habits of health one right here. And uh, you can see here the topic and there is the September 14th one. Um, the, uh, one that was just done, I think they take a little bit of time they to get take a week till it gets up there or something like that. Yeah. So the archives can be there, but if you play the one on the left here, um, this one right here is the, um, MP3 and, um, over here is the actual, um, webinar one over here. And you can send this to a client by clicking that little, oh, gotta move this window, this little share button. And there's the YouTube link right there. What? Yeah, I know. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. And what I do is I specifically send my clients to this page so they can see the other ones too. So I send them this, I copy this link right up here at the top. And then I say, Hey, check this out. And then I say, if you need to get right to it, here's the YouTube link, but I want you to check out this page and scroll down and see, you can see some of the archives. Okay. Um, now there's one more place I go for people who don't um, seem very savvy, or I just want to get them directly to the link. And they and I and I think they're gonna. They've told me they're probably not gonna watch it, but they're gonna listen to it. Maybe while they're driving somewhere or while they're working out. I got this podcast right here, and bam! Look, the podcast is already loaded with the Jared and Amber Smiths one on um, inflammation. So that's really cool. So I can go right here and send someone this link right here to this podcast. Okay, I'm not gonna launch my um, um, iTunes right now, but there you go. And where I got that link right there was I just typed in, guess what? In Google, Habits of Health Podcast. And boom, that's crazy. What so it's I kind know. of cryptic. It's kind yeah. of hard to remember. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 
And the nice thing about the podcasts are that you can subscribe, which is which is I find really nice. And then you can listen to them when you're doing something else. So sometimes with the video, it gives you it takes more of your focus. And so you c- couldn't really watch one of those while you're driving or riding a bike or something like that. But you, what you can do is you can listen to the audio only version. And then if you do have time where you really want to study it, you can go back and watch, you know, the webinar, which sometimes has a slideshow, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. When we talk about Facebook, I'll show you some really cool things that I've been doing to uh, use Facebook to, um, I've been using these habits of health calls to get lots of people telling me what they're interested in. And then I, I'll show you how we follow yeah. up. With them. And so we'll jump into that. Um, Angela and I were, so thank you, Alex, for the, uh, for that. That was a great little discussion. I think I love that we can, we're not just learning how to build our health coach practices. We're learning how to care for people, which guess what? It's the same thing. So um, think about that for, put that in your, in your health coach practice and, and smoke it if you will. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things here that, that Angela and I were talking about is just the idea of community. And uh, she has a couple of clients she was telling me about that are that are just doing really great. And I said, "Have you met with um, you met with m- myself or your coach initially when you're getting them set up? And but have you had like a celebration? So usually you want to do it somewhere in the beginning." And then when they hit fat burn, so between six and 10 days, somewhere in that first week, you want to celebrate their, the magic place of the fat burn because it's kind of a teachable moment. It's a pretty powerful moment where they're pretty excited they lost five pounds. Angela said this lady called her up and she was stressed out because she had lost five pounds like in just a few days and she was worried. And she said, no, nothing to be worried about. That's actually fairly typical for this program. And she's like, oh, man. So now she got excited. And, um, and so I asked, so usually about week three or four, they've lost around 10 to 10 pounds, maybe 15 pounds. And so people start to notice somewhere in that week three or week four. So that is a great time for every person that you have on program, every new client that you just say, oh, I'm going to. You know, I have the initial call and then at fat burn, I have another three-way call with my coach and then somewhere around three to four weeks, I have another one to maybe celebrate that first month. And so you just tell them, Hey, our co- my coach is going to, is going to, um, is going to connect with us a few times during your journey, uh, for additional support. And also their, you know, they like to build community for their pro- process too. Right. And so you, when you just let them know that that's what's going to happen, then when you do it, they're like, oh, yeah, I anticipated this. I expected this. And what it does for them is it shows them that there's more than just their their one on one connection with with their um, direct coach. It shows them that there's many people out there coaching. So that has some subconscious ideas that, oh, there's lots of coaches out there. And there's community. The second thing that it does is that this, this idea, imagine if you have two people um, that you teach them a song, right? And they learn the song. Let's call the song the Habits of Health song, right? And as they st- start to learn the lyrics, now they can sing together and create a healthy harmony. Yep, I went there. You knew I was going there. But imagine if a bunch of people that are like, let's, let's say you had um, your whole family and they were singing the habits of health harmony, right? Or song. And then they came over for Christmas. And now you, you as a family will be able to buy your actions. It's like you're singing a song that you all know the words to. When you say lean and green, they know what lean and green is. When you, when you're drinking water, they know why, because they're drinking it too. You know, and so that you have these habits that are just built into the people that you are around. And it's as if everybody knows the words to the song and they've practiced it so they know how to sing it. And so that's why we want to build community. And that's why we want to ask people who's noticing. And they'll say so and so from work. Well, what are they saying? They're saying, oh, my goodness, you you look totally great. You you're doing awesome. What are you doing? And if they were able to, he's like, here's, this, here's this, some sheet music. Learn to sing this and we can sing together, right? And the thing is, is that now you've got two people that are learning the same words. And in addition to you, 
and then you have your coach. So immediately you have a group of four people. That's a quartet of healthy habits of health. And so well, I want you to think about that idea. The action item is to let the, your new clients know that your coach is going to be part of their journey at different, different times. And then the second action, so then set those, set those meetings up. And by the way, your coach is probably not going to say, so is your coach, is your client at week three, at week, is it, is it 14 days? Is it, that's your job because you know where your clients are. Your coach doesn't always know what day your, all your clients are on. So that's your job to set those up. And then, um, and then the reason why we do it, the big why, is because it helps them to build that community around them. And they might even awaken to more than just health for themselves. They may decide that they want to create a, a health coach practice and they want to build that same thing. Well, this is going to be another opportunity for them to see what that looks like. So lots of reasons. So hopefully you got your takeaways. Um, within the first month, literally, you should have at least one, but possibly up to three connections with your coach to help to build that community. Is that pretty crystal clear? Pretty good stuff? And like I said, the onus is on you because you're the, you're, the, you're the CEO. So that's why I want to transition to what, it, to what it's like to have a CEO hat. Um, CEO stands for chief executive officer. Usually the CEO is the, the top person in the company. Oftentimes the owner of the company is also the CEO. And so now think about it. So a lot of times companies will have multiple layers of people. You have, um, you know, people that are maybe lower skilled at lower pays it's that maybe they're in janitorial cleaning types of things possibly. And then, uh, and then you have people that, uh, you know, might do the plumbing or the, you know, the, uh, the toilet breaks, you call them in specifically to fix the toilets. Right. And then you have some people that might be dealing with customer service. You might have an HR department. Well, guess who, guess in your health coach practice, guess who, guess who um, wears all those hats? Mm -hmm. You do. You're the plumber, you're the janitor, you're the HR department, your customer support, customer service, you're the RMA department, you're the CEO, you're the CFO, you're the COO, right? And so that's all you. But just because you're responsible for all those things doesn't mean you know how to do all those things, right? I mean, a lot of us have never been a CEO of nothing. Right. And so you start with this health coach practice and this is a process of building the skills to become a CEO and then you can become a great CEO. Right. And so that's what we do with this is we want to transfer the skill sets of being a CEO. But I think it starts with you of saying, if this, if I don't do this, this doesn't get done because I'm the CEO. I am the owner of a company of one. It's my job. I have got, I got consultants and I've got people that I can connect to and I've got people that are willing to build and pour into me to help build those skills at no charge, by the way. But I'm the one that's, the, the buck stops with me. If I'm not getting what I want, would I fire myself, right? Think about that. Would you, fi would you hire you? If you were in business, would you hire you? And your answer might say, if it's no, well, why don't you become hireable, right? Let's go build some skills so you can hire yourself. <laughs> hey, I, I want to pause out. on there. Um, yeah. I asked myself that question a couple of different times um, in the past. And um, interestingly enough, um, I answered no to that question. <laughs> that actually when I looked at like my ability to follow up and follow through with people, I was like, I wouldn't really hire me right now. <laughs> and, and, and that was, that was, I didn't like it. Right. Yeah. And it was being honest. And, you know, I thought, well, what was missing and what would it take? And then I linked arms with you and Terry and some other people to help me fill that. So I think that's an important question. And, and we can get down on ourselves, not, and just because you're missing one little thing, you know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a chronic, consistent issue. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, another thing is if you don't have it, mm -hmm. can you get it? Can you get it? That's right. And I say you can. Mm -hmm. But so for me, the thing is that I don't even know that I don't have it. I just know something's not working. And right. I sometimes don't even know it's not working because I don't even know what I don't even know. 
right? But and that's frustrating, isn't it? Does. When you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's a really important piece there. It's just the first thing is, is realizing that you want to step into that. There's a book. You guys ready for your little um, taking notes? A book called The Oz Principle. And it talks about playing above the line. And we, we go above and below the line regularly in our lives. But as we learn what it is, what it looks like to live above the line, then we can seek that. And that's basically about taking responsibility, being the CEO. And it's also about not beating yourself up and getting into just pessimism yeah. with yourself. It's like, ooh, I went below the line. Okay. Right. Let's with get- your own self. With your own self. It's your own self-dialogue too. I love it. Good yep. book. Yep. So that's a great little one to, lead, to read. I have become a, 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 a far more adventurous and, and aggressive reader since in the last six years. I mean, seriously. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of times I don't, I listen to books, audio books. That was my, I was like, I can't really read. I buy all these books and they sit on my shelf and they're really cool to look at, but I just don't really read them. And so I was like, well, I listen to podcasts all the time. Hey, there's a thing called audible and that's a business expense for me. And I listen to the books and now I'm actually getting both so I can actually highlight them and anyway, but figure it out. What's it going to take for you to be the CEO? My excuse of I'm not a reader wasn't cutting the mustard because people needed me to lead, right? I needed to be lead my own life. So awesome. So great little conversation there. Are you the CEO? Did you realize you're the CEO? Are you a good one? Are, and I fire myself all the time, by the way. And I, I get it. I, I hire myself back again and I work harder. But. <laughs> Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Facebook strategies and, um, there's uh, a couple things, by the way, hi Parrish. Nice to see you. I didn't recognize you. I'm like, that's not Parrish. I see it says Parrish's name, but, but you just look so great. There you are, Parrish. This is so Carrie and Parrish are both uh, dental hygienists. So from Spokane. So a couple things here is we have um, something called tickling the algorithms. Has anybody raised your hand if you've heard of tickling the algorithms, right? It's kind of a funny way to talk about it. Yep. But on Facebook, there's this magic stuff that happens behind the scenes to make Facebook work. And you, you know, just because you friended somebody um, over time, if you've never commented on anything they've posted or you've never liked anything that they've posted, Facebook assumes that you're not really friends and they want to, they don't want to fill up your newsfeed with stuff that doesn't interest you. They want you to actually be things on your newsfeed to be things that are from people that you actually know and actually are your friends. And so what you can do is you can, uh, we, we, you can um, tell Facebook, I do like this person or I, I want to have influence on this person and I want to share my healthy life with them. And the simple way to do that is when they post something that you see that you like, I just put a smiley face in the comments. And then Facebook goes, oh, Craig commented on Alex's post. They must actually really be friends because they're talking to each other. And so Facebook all of a sudden resets the algorithms and now we see every, all the posts back and forth for a while. So what I've done is there's usually probably two or three people at a time, you know, and I just kind of, I sort of, I call it Facebook stalking, right? And Facebook stalking is somebody comes to my heart, maybe I see them at church or I see them somewhere, and I, I can just tell that their life, their health is not in good, it's just not good. They haven't told me, they haven't expressed a need, I can just, you know, you know, those, there's two or three of those people in your life. And so what I'll go is I'll go and I'll look at their Facebook feed, and I don't do this with more than three, by the way, that's really important for me. Because when I wanted to be this to everybody, I did it to nobody. Right? I was like, I want to have everybody see my stuff. 
you know, and nobody saw it because I was, I was just ineffective. So I picked three people at a time that come to my mind and I have a little list of who those people are. And so I'll regularly go to their page and I'll look for something that genuinely interests me or I laugh or it's a funny little thing they quoted and I will comment. I don't just like it. I comment on it because that affects the algorithms more than a like. I'm not sure even if liking does anything anymore, but I don't know. I know commenting does. And I sometimes I'll put, I'll, I'll put a, that, that looks like a fun thing or wow, you know, I'll ask them a question. But oftentimes if you see me put a smiley face in a comment, you know what I, you know why I did that. And so I picked two or three people. You can also go and you can favorite that person or you can put it, which puts a star on them. And that means you're going to see all their posts first in your timeline. So I star them and then I stalk them and I pick three. And these are people that really could use my help that I have some type of a relationship with. And I want them to start seeing my healthy recipes. I want them to see my racing around stuff. I want them just to expose my sort of life a little bit to their timeline. And then I'll, and then you'd be surprised. They'll, they'll make a comment back because now they're seeing your stuff and the stuff we do is amazing. You know, the lives that we change is amazing, but they just don't have a lot of amazing in their life. They're overweight and they're not healthy and their lives maybe are partly cloudy. And they start seeing our sunny, our sunny life kind of infiltrate their Facebook uh, page and things can change. Now, I'll tell you a story. We had a person that had like 80 pounds they lost and they were a brand new coach. And they had been a Facebook consumer, not a contributor for their entire Facebook career, if you will. They'd never commented on anything. They just used it to, to look at other people's stuff, right? And they put their before and after picture out there and not one like or one comment. They were devastated. But it had nothing to do. If people would have seen it, they would have loved it. Nobody saw it because they had never commented on anybody's stuff. So now we actually prime the pump and we do a little bit of tickling the algorithms before we, we throw out those kinds of things. Or just, I mean, if you're just getting ready to do a Facebook launch, then you want to do a little bit of that stuff. One of the things that I'll do, and Linda, you know about this, is have you guys ever seen those silly posts that say, show a picture of a toilet, toilet paper roll and it says, you know, do you put it on this way or that way? Comment below. Do you know why we do that? Because then people are going to comment left or right. And what's Facebook going to think? Oh, your friends. Now they're going to start seeing more of your stuff. Or you say, you know, you, you have, there's just these silly little funny things that people will put. Do you shower in the evening or the morning? Go. Because some people in the Midwest, they shower in the evenings because they've been out in the farm all day. Us West Coasters, we shower in the mornings mostly, right? But you, so you can figure out some kind of, a, of a, um, a question like that and throw it out there and then pe and ask people to comment. And as they comment on it, now all of a sudden it tweaks the algorithms. Any questions about, it's pretty clear, I think, uh, but any questions about that? I'd love to hear other people's thoughts on what they know has worked to um, increase their Facebook uh, responsiveness or if they know something about Facebook that hasn't been shared yet. So uh, one thing that has worked for me is I heard, I think it was from Terry, that when you private message somebody, it really triggers Facebook to, um, to share your stuff. And so I've been doing that, and not, not only has it been great for that, but I've actually um, made some great friends, and we were Facebook friends, but you know what that really is. But I, I've reached out with private message just sort of saying, hey, I see that you blank. You know, maybe they like dogs or something that's maybe in common with me. And we've ended up getting together even. So not only are our feeds being shared, but we're being, we're connecting in real time. It's so good. Thank you for that. 
yeah, obviously that is the end game, by the way, folks, <laughs> right? You don't want it tickling the algorithms and all that is to actually eventually connect with them as a human being and, and, and have a, have it make a connection with them. So. Hey, Craig, just yeah, a hi. quick thought. Good morning. I love these meetings. So it's always good to be on here. Um, Craig already, you touched on this really, but like he said, letting people see maybe not just healthy posts or before and after posts. Um, something Doug Wood said once is, are you a before and after coach? Are you a diet coach? Are you a recipe coach? Basically insinuating what is the most that people will see on your feed. So having a balance is really important. And I have found that, um, like Craig said, really letting people kind of know the flavor, for lack of a better term, of your life, what's important to you, um, can really help people. You, you can come across as a, almost a, a safe individual by either being honest about where you are and sharing your purse, what, what are you doing with your family, as well as, you know, what are your health coaching accomplishments and having that balance can really make you a lot more approachable I have found I don't even know if that makes sense but I found that to be very successful when I'm honest and transparent not I mean you don't want to throw out there and say I ate a whole piece of or I ate a whole pizza because that's not good encouraging yeah but but <laughs> and, and and I yeah we don't want to glorify our downsides right um, but, but, but I think it's when you're honest, it's important for us to be human. Yeah. And yeah. Alex and I have both done that. Hey, I've gained a few pounds, you know, I'm about, I'm up about eight or 10 pounds and I'm looking to, um, to take it off again. Who's with, you know, who, exactly. who can, who can commiserate with me putting on a few pounds and they're all yeah. thinking, not 10, like 50. You know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. And you're not just sitting in that you're always moving the progressive feel that we have as coaches is I don't have to stay here. It can yep. be very helpful for people. Well, nobody loses their weight and maintains a perfect weight, right? It's just right. part of our physiology. Mm -hmm. But what we don't do as health coaches, if we're integrated, is we don't probably gain more than about 10 back. We never gain half of our weight or all of our weight back. I mean, why? You don't, we don't have to. Why would we? Right? But that's not the case for most people they do gain all their weight back with interest. Yep. So excellent. Um, anybody else have any um, s comments on that or, or um, strategies you've tried around Facebook that have been helpful? Carrie, I know you have, I hate to put you on the spot here, but I know that you have a very, very um, straightforward approach to Facebook that you've used and that you've, just communicated. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that? And if you have background noise, it's no sweat. I always have background noise. Mm -hmm. um, I think my straightforward, like you said, making comments on people's posts. And then um, if anybody likes any of my posts, whether it's health related or not, I follow up with them mm -hmm. for the most part, especially if it's health related. Hey, thanks for liking my post. Trying to get the word out that I'm a health coach. If you or anybody you're you know, is interested, let me know. And often, and even just four people in the last two days, random, random have sent me messages. Hey, I want to get started. Okay. I think I can help you. So just trusting the process of people that I contacted a year, year and a half ago, when they're ready, I will come on their mind because they see that I am a health related person on Facebook, even if it's not an instant response. Um, so I think consistency is huge in branding yourself as a health coach along with all of real life things like my kids pooping on the floor. So I think that, I don't know. <laughs> is that funny? No, <laughs> that's exactly, exactly the idea there. Um, that's the potty train going, by the way. We're done. Yeah, he likes to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> As long as it is in the toilet, then I don't really care. We were we had a three-way call with her the other day, and he comes up and he goes, he looks it on the screen, he goes, I'm naked. <laughs> and I was like, good, oh, that's good to know. How you doing? It's funny. This is our normal right here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's you know, so when Craig and I do our, our coaching calls, he does the same thing. He goes, I'm yeah. naked. I'm, I'm like, naked. Craig, stop. stop. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Jeff, you had something. Go ahead. 
Uh, I just had a question. What is your guys' thoughts? You know, I've heard about posting. Um, you know, uh, obviously we want a blend of like, uh, what is it, 80% personal, 20% uh, health coaching, whatever. But how many times a day do you think is kind of – I've heard all the way up to six times a day. I've heard – and so trying to figure out what legitimately is that balance. And I, I don't yeah. want to look like a diet coach. And sure. Such. I've heard the five and one is a, is a good rule. It's, it's catchy. We, we, um, you know, it's part of our, one of our most popular programs that we offer. And so five non, non five general, and then one specific call to action or health related or, Hey, you know, do you know somebody kind of a thing? Um, I've heard of those kind of things for me. I just say, um, I personally want to be a healthy person. And so I just post, post stuff I'm doing. Hopefully if I am a healthy person, the health will come across, you know? Um, but if I go on a bike ride or, you know, little short little videos seem to get a lot of just a little thought that I have, boom, throw it on Facebook. The other day, my buddy came back from the Rio, um, Paralympics and he had won a gold and two silvers. And so I went live Facebook because that was a health related thing, celebrating this guy, my training partner, you know, and set, lit up the, the, the internet. So those are the kinds of things that, that, that I do different things. I, I, I share things that I'm interested in and I'm excited about for me. So five in one is what I've heard is a, is a good scenario. Linda, you have some experience. I, I just, I had a kind of a question comment, maybe Alex or Craig, you guys can comment on this, but Jeff, I don't know if you knew, I thought that if I posted six times a day, the same people were going to see it, but that's actually not how it works. Um, isn't that closer to like the way Facebook works is that it pops up in different, different people's feeds. So if you post one thing two hours after you've already posted, it doesn't mean the same people are always going right. to see. Well, so I've done that before. Reaches different people or something. I'll, I'll go and I'll see something that I like and I'll scroll past it and then I'll go back and want to get it and it's gone. And you can't find it. Yeah. It go? Yeah. So yeah, six so times I, a day isn't as excessive as it feels to us because that's not actually not how it works. Is that correct, Craig? Well, yeah. When you're okay. connected with all six of your posts and you're thinking, ah, oh, I'm overwhelming people. Just because you post it doesn't mean they, everyone sees it. Yeah. That was helpful to me, yeah. It's a big deal what you're talking about. So we have to remember what Facebook's goal is, right? So Facebook actually has goals that they're looking to achieve. And if we understand those goals, we can understand how they tweak their algorithms in principle. Now they keep upgrading their algorithms because they are trying to achieve their goal more effectively, right? So Facebook's goal is to connect everyone in the world on Facebook, That's what they wanna do. They have a side goal of making a whole lot of money too. And they make money through advertisers. They make money through collecting data. Um, they, they make money through understanding what people are interested in in this world. Facebook is an amazing data research company, if you will, that makes a lot of money selling marketing too. But they sell, not your private information, but they sell the data to what people really want. So what does that all mean to you? It means that they are going to, there's keywords that they like seeing, and you can look those up. There's key things that people that are in your, they're your friend group that they type a lot. So if you actually start to see what people in your friend group are interested in, like go, before you start doing too many things, look and see who your circle of influence, what they like, what do they comment on? What do they post on? Find those common things and then you'll, you'll know what they're going to respond to. Well, when Facebook sees that you make a post that is relevant to that audience, they're going to make sure that shows up a number one in their newsfeed, right? So somebody's commenting on kitty cats and puppies all the time, <laughs> right? And you don't put those keywords or those kind of photos. You're going to, it doesn't mean you're never going to show up, but you may not show up as much in there. Now, the other way that you show up all the time in somebody's feed is what going by what Craig said already. And that is you guys have an interaction or relationship or they've specifically clicked to follow you, right? And that's, that's key. But as a rule, here's the bottom line. As a rule, only 8% of your Facebook friends actually see your post. 
only 8%. Positive. And what will have what I'll see on those is I post something and a few of my friends comment on it. Well, now all of a sudden Facebook goes, oh, well, I'm going to let some more of Craig's friends see this post and they start posting on it. And eventually it starts to be the snowball. We're now friends of friends that I don't even know. It's showing up on their Facebook. You know, if I get 250 comments on something, lots and lots of people are seeing that. Mm -hmm. Right. And if this is overwhelming, like you're new on Facebook, you don't have to know all this. We're just trying to give you a little bit of information. Start with a couple of these tips. That's it. Right. Pick one or two and start doing them. And I love what, um, oh, who was it that said it earlier? Um, it was Carrie, how she follows up with people privately when they like or comment on something. My, 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 my caution is, is that make sure that when you follow up with people, it's not always, you know, I can send you information about my health program. And I'm, and I'm sure she does balance that out. I'm just saying because then, then you become that, oh, they're just trying to get me person. Yeah, here's, here's a really cool way to respond. When someone likes something, mm -hmm. you go, thanks for liking my, and I, you may wanna write this down, it's really cryptic. Thanks for liking my post, how are you? So you go, <laughs> wow. the first word was how, and then the second was are, and, you, and it's in the form of a question. Yes. Start a dialogue, right? Yeah. Get a conversation going. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to probably say, they'll probably, I'm just fine. Tell me about your thing. So they will steamroll right over it because, but let them, let them direct that. <laughs> so Jim, you have your hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, my question is, is that, you know, we, we all have busy lives and in the post, you know, five and one or, or six posts a day. How do you do that time-wise? I know that there's, you know, things like Hootsuite and things. Do you recommend sitting down at night? I know there's some people, I think I talked to Linda about this, at conference where she will actually sit down and, and set up a week's worth of posts, and that way they go out different times of the day just to kind of be mm -hmm. taking care of her yeah, time. That's one thing that T Becca Tinter uh, trained on it, and she spends, I think, on Monday or someday, maybe it's Sunday night, and spends about two hours. And she has a, like, um, I'm going to do in the mornings, I do a motivational thing, you know, in the afternoons, I do a funny thing in the evenings, I do a recipe, you know, around dinner time. And then in the evening, maybe I do a motivational, inspirational before and after. So you have your little like segments and then, or your structure, and then you just start cranking things into there. There are some tools that you can use that are free. Buffer is one of them. Hootsuite's another. Both of them are great. Um, and then there's a fee-based one called Synduit that has a lot more functionality, but Facebook posting is the one of the things that it does. The nice thing about Synduit is it does create all the content for you. You just customize the little things here and there, and, and you can launch different things. So, but that's very powerful and you need to be responsible not to have it overwhelm things, right? But that's about $25 a month for that one. And so that's a great little tool. One of the things that I, I put in the email that you got to invite you to this meeting and I just posted it in the chat message is um, understanding how to utilize social media uh, as a Take Shape for Life coach, right? So to me, if I'm the CEO of my business and I'm unsure about how I'm gonna do this, I'm going to carve take shape time and I'm going to go watch that video and I'm going to go, Oh my goodness, that was a bunch of stuff. I didn't even know. I didn't even know, but now I know it. And then one of them is moving conversations to the phone, right? So you move it from the post to the message to the phone. That's what Carrie was talking about that she does. And then uh, there's a little PDF with a little script, a checklist on how to do that. And then there's one at the bottom, Facebook 101. If you're just not really familiar with Facebook, you can do that. So you don't have to watch all those, but I would recommend if you're planning on, Facebook is a great way to brand yourself and it's a great way to have an ongoing sort of dialogue with people. And it also lets you know what's going on in their world. Um, and so Facebook is a so, social media, not just Facebook. There's other formats too, but Facebook is the gorilla on the block for sure. So, uh, Jeff, you had, a, you had your hand up. I'll unmute you there. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, I just started this Synduit thing, and I've been pretty highly in, uh, uh, intimidated by it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I started it a month ago, uh, signed up, and I have, it just felt overwhelming until I did it. And 
I like, it just gave me a structure as a, and then I can go in there and kind of do my own thing. I was just intimidated by the, one of the guys was saying the overwhelmingness of trying to do all this Facebook stuff. Um, and it just gave me a layout and then I, it was really, really, really easy. I yeah. just, uh, yeah. so anyway, check out, if you want to check out Sindhu, it's definitely, uh, definitely something to look at. I would say, depending on the level of your business, think about this, how much time, do you have to invest in to take shape? If you have two hours a week to invest into it and you're coaching three people, well, Sindhu, it's going to be $25 a month. So you have to think about, is this, am I at the point where I need to start having services do some of these things for me? You know, talk with your business coach and figure out if that's the best for you. It might be a really good thing. might not be a good thing. So it's up to you um, and your circumstances. Um, The other piece of that puzzle is, um, that uh, spending, uh, you know, taking some time while you're watching TV or doing something, and if you don't, if you don't take your take shape time, who is, right? You're the CEO. I'm not going to market your business for you. Your health coach practice for you, right? And so, if you're not doing it, it's not getting done. And so, think about: Am I? Am I? being a good employee or employer right now and take that time like Linda does. And she, I see your little things. They say Hootsuite, you know, and I go, I see that you posted something so personal. And then I see that it was on Hootsuite. I'm like, man, she, not only did she do that, but she planned that days in advance. It's like so pro. So Martin, did you, you, I saw your finger go up, but did you have, yeah, I just want to add something on this into it. Uh Uh-huh. I should sit up and be more attentive. Um, also, when evaluating that cost for whether that monthly, and there are some good services within there. Um, what's your Facebook presence? So, if someone doesn't have a large Facebook presence, maybe there that wouldn't be an appropriate investment at that time. Yeah, okay. and that's one. That's a strategy that you'll read. As far as one of the Facebook strategies is, if you're less than a hundred friends on Facebook your first job is to spend those two hours a week friending people. You want to have at least two to 300 friends and adding 10 10 people a week, roughly, right? And eventually you'll get up, you know, you'll get up to, you know, three to 500 to a thousand. If you think about it, everybody knows about three to 600 people, 300 people by first name. So if you have a hundred friends, that's 3000 people maximum that that has you know and um if we get you know one percent of those people that's only 30 people so think about slowly starting to say who did i in terry miller's got a really good strategy who is my childhood friends oh uh my one was robbie deal right am i his facebook friend yes or no uh yes okay who was robbie's parents did i know them well I can't even remember their names. So I might look to see if he's friends with his parents because I know they know me because I grew up with them. And then, so you start, and who was my, my favorite teacher? And, you know, and who was, you know, people that, you know, so you just start to think, who are my, who are my parents' friends at the time? Did I have a dentist? You know, so you start to kind of go into the worlds of people that if you said, hey, and you friended them, they would go, oh, I remember so-and-so been a while but i remember so and so and that's the whole point of of doing that kind of thing so Sindwood had a, a seminar last night and it's available someplace i can't remember where they posted it um jc dornick had it was doing something with his uh, some of his Sindwood posts and after instead of just letting it sit there on his timeline he would go back in and look at the post whether maybe it was a motivational message or um, something he would tag people in that post so the first comment line in his post he would go in there and tag five or six seven eight ten people to make sure that they would see it what he found was after he started tagging them the comments the comments and likes um, ratios went up yeah there you go but see it's that intentionality to set it up uh, ahead of time. Yep. All right, go. So, so this is, uh, we talked about a lot of things today, you know, your CEO hat, 
are you, do you consider yourself the CEO of your business? Because whether you do or not, you are. And um, I, I like to say my health coach practice rather than business, but because that's who we are. We're practicing helping people. Um, and then um, it, when you think about that too, if you're the CEO of a business, have you ever, most of us have never thought about having an employee or who would I hire if I needed a service done or I needed something done in my company and I had to hire somebody, what are some basic things that I would want them to have? I've never thought about that before. I've never thought about having employees. So I started thinking about what if my coaches were in our model employees? What kind of skills would I want them to have? What kind of people would I want around my business interacting with my, with my company? And you, by the way, you are them, okay? And so, but if you think about who you would like, what you, what you are focusing on, you see. And so that if you're paying attention to the quality of person you're looking for, you'll probably start to see that person in your life, okay? So think about that. That those are because you get to build a team of the people you do not have to sponsor anybody to be on your team you get to choose just because they want to be on your team doesn't mean they get to be you get to choose and i would say pay attention to who you're choosing because you're probably going to invest a fair amount of time into them you know and do you want that do you if you don't like them as a person why would you hire them to be a close partner in your company? I, I, I'm, that's a good question. So we talked about being a CEO. We talked about Facebook strategies, tickling algorithms, you know, starring or favorite uh, following people. And then um, there's another uh, collage campaign, which there's a, a, a document um, on simple systems that talks about the collage campaign where you have a collage of not just a before and after, but a, a, a collage of people. And uh, one of the neat things about that is that you can actually send it to one of your uh, clients or new coaches and um, you can follow their, get notifications on that post. So anytime somebody comments on it, Facebook lets you know. That is a really, really high leverage technology. So you don't have to pay attention to go back and look at that every time. Facebook just notifies you when somebody says something on there and then you can make sure that you're you're paying attention. So there's some technologies out there that you can use. And um, if some of these go over your head, let them. The ones that you caught, grab them and take a good look at them, right? And then once you have a good um, perspective and a handle of those, then you can go to the, those next ones. But um, come up with a good strategy with your coach and talk about what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. And then go act on that. And then you make, you make uh, small changes over time. If you didn't get what you want, then check your ingredients, right? And go back and do it again. So thank you so much, guys. Um, did you have something, Linda, as we're closing? I was, uh, yeah, just if, if people are overwhelmed or encouraged, go look at your, your coach's Facebook. If, you, if you're Craig's coach, then look at what he does. Or Alex, that's what I've done if I'm trying to figure out how it works. Just mm -hmm. take a look at, at how they do it, what they post on, how they create that feel, and that can be really helpful. Yeah. For, or if there's a coach out there, like I'm, I, I stock Becca Tinter. Who likes Becca Me Tinter? Me too. I love the BT. Right? Yep. Yes. I, so there's a few coaches out there that I stock, and so I yeah. went and I favored it. I've, I'm following them. The yes. Woods. I think uh, Tia and Doug Woods, they've got some magic going on, and I don't know what it is, so I yes. follow them. Exactly. And then That's I get a little. Perfect. Better. Yeah. Perfect. All right, guys.